this was the problem that what we have solved in the yesterday's class. So this is just rearranged for you to uh, understand it clearly. So yeah, so we have two products, product A and B, and sell uh, profit of product A by selling one unit and profit of B by selling one unit is shown over here. The resource required is shown over here. And the constraint in terms of resource is also shown in the problem. Uh, so these are the statements given in the problem. You can just have a look. So if it is not clear, just have a look one more time. So the manufacturer has to decide on number of units of uh, products A and product B to produce. So we can see we have marked that as the decision variables. So that are the decision variables in our problem. OK, if it is acceptable that manufacturer would like to make as much as profit as possible and would decide on the production quantities uh, accordingly. So to make the uh, to make as much as profit as possible. So from that we can say that our objective function is to uh, maximize Z. OK, Z is nothing but the total cost. So the manufacturer has to ensure that the resources needs to make the product are available. So that are supposed to be your constraints. So that are your constraints. Before we attempt to find out the decision of the manufacturer, let us redefine the problem in algebraic form. So we have made it. So we have done. We have I have solved this in the board. So we have decided that. Uh, X1 be the number of products of A to be manufactured and X2 be the number of products of B to be manufactured. So the profit associated we have seen it is 6X1 plus 5X2. So this has to maximize. So maximize Z equals 6X1 plus 5X2. And we can see the resources in terms of constraint of R1. OK, the constraint, the first constraint and the uh, second constraint we have seen. So we have model the two constraints for the problem and uh, then what we have written, we have written the non negativity constraint also. So this is what we have initially written. So maximize Z equals 6 X1 plus 5 X2 subject to the constraint. We have formulated it and objective function is written. Constraints are written, non negativity constraint is written. Then we have solved the problem graphically. OK, so this is what we have did it in the yesterday's class. So we have seen the constraints like decision variables we have discussed. We have seen the objective function. We have seen the constraints uh, and the parameters. So these all things we have discussed in the yesterday's class. So if we see the standard form of an LPP problem, OK, so this is how the stand. This is what is basically known as the standard form of LPP equation. So uh, first you have to write the decision variable. So decision variables will vary from X1, X2 up to Xn. So it depends on the problem. It can have any number. And Z the objective function or linear function. So Z is uh, normally we have taken the objective function. We will write either in two ways. One is to maximize Z or we will write minimize Z. Maximize Z or minimize Z. OK, so maximize Z will be or minimize Z will be equal to the cost of or the profit of selling one unit of my decision variable that is C1 multiplied by my first decision variable X1 plus C2 X2 plus C3 X3 up to Cn Xn. Then subject to the following constraints. So constraints will be A11 X1, A12 X2 up to A19 X1 Xn should be less than or equal to B1. OK, should be less than or equal to B1. Likewise, n number of constraints you can add so that so up to here they are the normal constraint 
and finally you have to write all your decision variables that is x j uh, are greater than or equal to zero so that constraint we call it as a non negativity constraint so non negativity constraint is also written over there so this is now this is whatever is shown on the table this is called as the standard form of lpp standard form of lpp though we have solved the problem i have not discussed this with you so this is how this is how normally an lpp formulation will looks like so the first step you have to identify the decision variables then you have to write your objective function then subject to the constraints you have to write and finally you have to add your the non negativity constraints so this is how the standard representation of an lpp function looks like uh, any doubts in this any doubts in this is the standard form is clear so whenever you attempt a problem so first you have to write like this what are the decision variables then you have to write what is the objective function is to maximize or is to minimize then you have to write the functions then you have to write the constraints and finally the non negativity constraint you need to add so this is an another way is this is shorten it and return any or no need to short it and like this you can uh, practice uh, this so now uh, we will go to the uh, next problem so the problem is uh, over here you can just read the problem and 5 uh, minutes time i will give you can go through the problem uh, and uh, try to formulate it try to identify the decision variables and try to formulate it Five minutes time. I'll give. Yeah. Okay. Tell me. Sure. Two hundred x one plus three hundred x two. No, no, no. First, first tell me the decision variables. What sir? Decision variables. X one x two. X one x two. What is x one? What is x two? X one number of products of pair and number of products of table. Yeah. Exactly. So you can see two types of furniture. A car firm is required to make. so it is given as chairs and tables okay number 1 second information it is given as profit is gained by the manufacturer okay profit is gained by the manufacturer from a chair and table is 200 and 300 respective okay so from this statement you can understand that so you can understand that so let uh, x1 be the number of chairs to be manufactured okay let x2 be the number of tables to be manufactured okay then uh, what is this problem so it is given profit or cost is given is a profit is given or is the cost is given profit yeah profit is given so well, profit is the, given so wouldn't the, the variables be for each uh, Machine M1, M2, M3. Pardon me. So number of chairs produced by machine M1 is X1. Number of tables produced by machine M1 is X2. So I'll X3, X4, X5, X6. I'll come to it. I'll come to it. I'll come to it. Okay, wait for it. Just wait for a minute. So you can see the uh, the decision variables are X1 and X2, and profit is given. So the problem. So the objective function. Okay. So objective function is to maximize okay objective function is to uh, maximize now what is the objective function so it is maximize and equal how much 200 x1 plus 300 x2 yeah 200 x1 plus 300 x2 okay so that is your equation number 1 as the objective function okay now so we can see that we have marked chair as we have marked chair as x1 
and table as x2 okay now what is given the constraints, constraints. yeah constraints wow. on three machines okay m1 m2 and m3 is given so the time required for each product and total time available per each week okay on each machine is shown over here so uh, uh, how will you formulate the constraint 3x1 plus 3x2 less than equal to 36 like that everything yeah so the constraint on machine 1 so that is the first equation so the first equation so available hours on m1 in a week is limited to 36 okay so 36 hours per week it is limited and it requires 3 hours of uh, usage of m1 or for to make the chair and table it requires again 3 hours uh, on m1 to do the task on machine so total available hours in machine is 36 so as somebody have told me so the first constraint so subject to the constraint okay so it will be 3x1 plus 3x2 less than or equal to 36 next one 5x 5x1 plus 2x2 less than equal to 50 5x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 50 and third one 2x1 plus 6x2 less than equal to 60 2x1 plus 3x2 less than or equal to 60 okay and finally And x1 comma x2 greater than equal to 0 x1 comma x2 greater than or equal to 0 so this is the end of your okay so this is your end of your formulation okay this is the end of your formulation so first we have identified the decision variables so decision variables we have identified the two types of furniture chair and table to be manufactured so profit gain by selling one chair and one table is given so multiply by the number of units will give the profit of selling the total chairs and multiplying by the numbers of tables whatever you are selling will give the total profit of selling the table and constraint is given in terms of machines the total hours on machine 1 is restricted to 36 and it is given that 3 hours it the work has to be for making a chair it has to spend 3 hours on machine m1 and 3 hours on table is also required on machine m1 and total is restricted to 36 so 3x1 plus 3x2 less than or equal to 36 again machine m2 it requires 5 hours to spend to make a chair and table work it will continue for 2 hours only and total available hours in machine m2 is limited to 50 so 5x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 50 and in the third constraint on machine 3 it requires 2 hours of operation for making a chair and 6 hours of operation for making a table and maximum hours is restricted to 60 so you can write 2x1 plus 6x2 less than or equal to 60 and finally we will we have added the non negativity constraint that is x1 and x2 greater than or equal to 0 so that is the end of your formulation any doubt in this can we solve it yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. yeah each so, machine is producing separately no sir machine one can what? produce three chairs or three tables something like that okay. it no. takes three hours to produce no. table no. or chair no for getting one chair it has to spend 3 hours on machine m1 5 hours on machine m2 and 2 hours on machine m m3 put together will give you one chair okay sir okay same way 3 hours on uh, m1 2 hours on m2 and 6 hours on m3 will produce 
one table. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, or else the problem will be, or else you will not be able to formulate it like this. Clear? Was it clear? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else having any doubts? If no doubt is there, those who have no doubts, please solve it graphically. Is it possible to solve by graphically? Is it possible yes, to sir, solve by so. graphically? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, then solve it, solve it, solve it graphically. I had only two variables, so it is easy to uh, plot by using graphical method. X1. X2. So the first constraint is given as 3x1 plus 3x2 less than or equal to 36. So substituting x1 value as 0, x2 will be Two will be twelve, sir. Twelve. Okay. Substituting x two as zero, x one will again will be equals twelve from the first constraint. Second constraint. Five x one plus two x two less than or equal to fifty. Five x one plus two x two less than or equal to fifty. So if you put x one equals zero, x two will be twenty five. Substituting x two as zero. X one will be equal. X one will be equals ten. And third constraint. Two x one plus three x two less than or equal to sixty. Sir, third concern is uh, 2x1 plus uh, 6x2 is less than or equal to 60, sir. Okay. Two x one plus six x two less than or equal to sixty. Yeah. So x one is zero, x two is ten, and x two equals zero. X one will be thirty. Okay, so up to thirty twenty five, all those things are there. So take a scale suitably. So take a suitable scale. Okay. So the first constraint x1 is 0, x2 is 12. So x1 is 0, x2 is 12. So somewhere here. First point. Second point also same way 12 and 12. Search direction. What will be the search direction? For the constraint one, what will be the search direction? Down, sir, uh, towards the origin. 
less than equal to yeah less than equal to so towards the origin right so now plot the second constraint so it is 0 comma 25 that's a point and here it is 10 comma 25 again search direction will be since it is less than search direction will be towards origin down and the third constraint X one is zero. X two is ten. Okay. So that's the point. Then uh, X two, X two is zero. X one is thirty. Search direction. Search direction will be. Again, towards the x y axis. Now, which is the feasible region? Now, which is the feasible region? So, I had region one here. I had region two here, three here, four, five, and six. Six regions are there. Okay, so which is a feasible region? Which will be the feasible region? One, sir. How many of you agree to it? Yes, sir. It's one. One. Sure. No, sir. Uh, oh, yeah, one, one, sir. One, sir. One okay. one one only one one. Intersection of all the area. Yeah. So anybody is having any other opinion? So the one is bounded with points like A, B. Here one point is the C. You will have one point here, D. I had another point E, F, G, and H. So the feasible region will be one. So the one is here. This is this is your feasible region. So at location D, actually there are two points, sir. D and D. Location. Uh, D, you have written D, right? Actually, that is two yeah, points, yeah. sir. Yes, yes, two points are there, but all but the points are in same coordinate. Uh, no, no, sir, sir. different. One would be at nine comma three, other one would be at twelve zero. Here, oh, you are telling that one more intersection will come. Ah, uh, yes, one, sir. Yeah, okay, 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 right, 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 right. I agree to it. So. So here I had to mark a point uh, H I. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So the feasible region will be forming by the points A comma B comma C comma I comma D. Okay. Am I right? Yes, sir. They are called as the bounded. feasible points so rest h comma f comma e comma g they are they are also bounded but they are in feasible they are in feasible points and Region one is 
region one as the feasible region. So you will have the coordinates for A. So you will have the coordinates for A. So you will have X1, X2. So coordinate A, B. Then which, which all points are marked? A, B, C, I, D. What is the coordinate of X1 and X2 for A? I think 0. It is 0. Zero, 0, Yeah. Consider only two points. Uh, two points are uh, like uh, which, which might be maximum. Other no need to yeah, consider. Yeah, but, but, but you have to select all. Okay. okay. You have to select all. No, this has to show things. I, I, I will uh, come to that thing later. Okay. Mm -hmm. Certain modifications we will do at certain times later. So. So A, B, C, I, D. So this is X1, this is X2. A is 0, 0. B is, B is what coordinate? Sir, 10, 0. 10, 0. 10 and 0. C? I think 8, 8 4. 6, 6, 7. Pardon 8, me? 8, 4. 8, 4. I? That would be 9, uh, sorry, 3, 9. 3, 9. 3, 9. And D? 0, 10. 0, 10. Okay. So now you can substitute the value of z. You can find the value of z by substituting in the objective function. So first it is 0. Second one. Second one, how much? 2000. 2000. Third one? 3rd one? 2,800. How much? 1,800. 2,000. Sorry, 2,800. 2,800, sir. Yeah. So, 2,800. Next one? 3,300. 3,300. Last one? 3,000. 3,000. Okay. Now, sir, yes, please. Sir, that point C that uh, I am getting as 8.66 and uh, 4 as I am getting 3.33, sir. So, you take it as 9,3. Okay, sir. Okay, if you are exactly plotting it, whatever you are getting, you please take it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I I don't have the answers with me. I don't have the answers with me for this particular. Sir, problem. one small doubt, sir. Yes, please. Carry sir, on. One doubt, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, if the D point is greater than the uh, D point, uh, consider it is greater than 3300. Then, uh, but uh, one side is zero. So, will we consider that? Yes. Why not? Because only product uh, X2 what is, is being formed. Yeah, one minute, one, what is your non negativity constraint says? Okay. What is your non negativity constraint you are writing? XJ should be yeah, greater X1. than or equal to 0. So 0 is also an acceptable result. Okay. It means okay. that if you are getting a solution like that, 0 indicates that you don't need to produce x1 
you need to concentrate only on product X2 to maximize your profit. Okay. Oh, okay. The interpretation is if you got a result like that, the interpretation will be you don't need to produce product X1. You need to produce only product X2 to maximize the profit. Okay. Sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, uh, which uh, which condition now is, uh, follows my or satisfies my result? I think this is the Z max condition. Am I right? Am I yes, right? Sir. This returns maximum Z value. So maximum Z value will be maximum profit will be rupees 3300. You need to produce a chair. How many chair? Three numbers and table nine numbers okay so that will be your result what was my maximum z equation maximize z equals 200x1 plus 300x2 okay so z max is returning maximum as 3300 for a case of manufacturing three chairs and nine number of tables. Was it clear? Any doubts? Any discussions we can have? Sir, uh, but uh, that uh, you told that uh, non-negativity constraint. Uh, yeah. But it is practical to uh, have uh, X1 uh, also three and nine instead of zero. No? Which one? Like you, if that uh, D point is greater than 3300, uh, yes. are we only concentrating on the profit bit because uh, we will also concentrate on the product? No? Uh, but as it is returning that, you need to concentrate only on that product, so you will get a maximum profit. You don't need to concentrate on the uh, other product. Now, if you are running a business, it is your wish again to accept it or to reject it. Okay, the result is indicating like that. The result is indicating like that. You don't need to take care of this. You need to concentrate only on this. Okay, so you will get a profit or you have to change your designs or something like that to ensure that the marketing or the market strategies of that will get improved. Notice. Okay, so here from the machining information, we are getting it like that. Also, it is gives the information that don't waste the resource for making the chair. If you are getting it like that, you concentrate only on making of the table. Okay. Yeah. Any other doubts? Anything else we'll discuss? So this is what I told you. This is a uh, symbol. This is symbol like this only. All the things will go like this only in very simple form. Only thing is that this, I'm just uh, uh, giving you some simple examples only right now. So as the class progresses, we will try to uh, increase the complexity and varieties also I'll try to include. OK, the only thing is that to convert the things into uh, the online mode is a uh, little challenge since uh, I never ever used uh, uh, this kinds of even PPT. I never ever used PPT for teaching this operations research subject. OK. So usually it was a completely 100 percentage chalk and talk subject. So as an as I am doing here, I am expecting you also practicing on the other side. OK, so take some book, etc. and try to write and solve the things so you will get a better clarity. Why I am telling you because when you are uh, once after you are out of the course and all when you are going for MS, 
in foreign universities i have seen many of the students choose an operations research okay as their masters uh, program in abroad so plenty of universities offers ms in or itself uh, so this is the base for that okay so uh, think in that aspects also even after someone who is working for industry and leaving so they also have chosen this for their ms on a later stage so uh, uh, so please uh, look into that aspect also for this particular subject